neurotrophic corneal ulcer. Be careful. Now, this is a patient who didn't actually have that many symptoms from their infection. They came to us because they complained more of reduced vision rather than other symptoms. And actually, did you actually just notice that iridogenesis, which is very marked when the patient is looking and moving their eye in different directions? You can also see that they've got quite a bit of blepharitis as well. And just even from the reflex through the pupil, we can see that they're pseudophagic. I wonder whether they've got a history of pseudoexfoliation based on that level of iridogenesis. Now, it's a challenging examination here, okay? We can tell that from the way that the patient's blinking, the way that we're capturing the video. And so, neurotrophic cornea is a degenerative condition caused by reduced corneal sensation. And the cornea relies on this healthy nerve supply from the trigeminal nerve to maintain its structure, healing, and trigger that protective reflex like the blink and tear production. And so when innovation is lost or impaired, the corneal surface becomes vulnerable to breakdown, delayed hearing, healing, sorry, and persistent epithelial defects. And that's what you see in this patient, that epithelial defect with those smooth and rolled edges, and there's typically minimal or no surrounding inflammation. And that helps you to differentiate from an infectious ulcer. So causes of neurotrophic keratitis include herpes simplex or zoster keratitis, long-term contact lens wear, diabetes, previous ocular surgery or trauma, and even injury to the trigeminal nerve. Sometimes long-term topical medication, particularly with preservative, can even exacerbate the condition as well. So we need to focus on protecting the cornea, promoting epithelial healing, treating any coexisting infection, and helping the patient to recover their epithelial defect. Because if they have a persistent epithelial defect, they're at high risk of corneal melt, perforation, and superinfection. Hope you found this video useful, and bear in mind this differential diagnosis in the future.